Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Tuesday, the 7th of March, 2023. I'm Ken Demaja Open Heavens is authored by Adadin the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Father, we want to say thank you for a new day, for this beautiful day. Thank you, O Lord, for waking us up. Thank you, O Lord, for visiting us. We say be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the daily loads of your benefit over our lives. Father, we worship you. We exalt your holy name. Father, as you have sent your word to us again, we pray, O Lord, that through your word, O Lord, our faith will be risen in the name of Jesus. That through your word, O Lord, our life, O Lord, will be transformed. That indeed your word will be a light to our faith. That indeed, O oh Lord, through your word, O oh Lord, we will have direction and purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for you have heard us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic for today is the storm stealer. The storm stealer. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Mark 4, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Our Bible reading is taken from the same book of Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. And the same day, when the even was gone, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in this ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said unto one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The message. A storm. A storm is so big and weight is a problem so big and weighty that no one can single-handedly resolve it. However, some some storm can be stilled, and from my study of the scripture, such an occurrence is the result of a collaboration between God and man. When a storm is brewing at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, there was a need for the servants to collaborate with Jesus. In order to steal it, to steal it, John 2, 1 to 10. If they had argued about pouring water inside the pot and taking a cup of it to the chairman of the wedding, the storm would not have been stilled. When the prophet's widow in 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7 was hit with a storm that would have taken away her sons, she was told to borrow many empty vessels into which she was to pour a little oil. That instruction did not make sense. But she did her part by obeying and God did his by multiplying the oil. If you can collaborate with God, he can help you steal any stone. Some years ago, while preparing for a program in the north, I was told how the sandstorm there could get so bad that there would be no visibility at all. I said, I see. That evening, while holding the program outside as the crowd was too much for the little church, a sandstorm suddenly started and people began to panic. I then heard my father say to me, stretch out and say peace. I did just that and immediately the wind stopped and the sand fell back to the ground and we had a wonderful program. In Mark 4, 35-41, the Lord and his disciples were traveling in a boat when a storm arose. The Lord got up and stilled the storm, but then asked, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? 
Is there a storm in your life that has threatened you for long? The question for you is, how is it that you have no faith? Don't you know that if you would only collaborate with God, you could steal the storm? Go to God in prayer and say, stay in his presence until he tells you what to do to steal that storm. A man or woman of God should not be frightened by a storm. He or she should simply speak peace to the storm in the name of Jesus and it will become still. The topic once more is the storm stealer. Like I think the Lord has given a definition of what storm is. He said a storm is a problem so big and weighty that no one can single-handedly resolve it. You know, perventure you are going through a particular problem now. You have tried all your best. In fact, you have even invited people to help you. But it has become sticky. It's not even going anywhere. These are like storms. These are the storms that we are talking about today. You know, but then there's a good news concerning storm. The good news is that whatever the storm is, no matter the storm is, no matter how long you have been going through the storm, that particular storm can be stilled. And your storm shall be stilled in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We have been told that if you want that storm to be stilled, storm being stilled involves the collaboration of God and man. Provided you can collaborate with God and there will be no collaboration if if. If there is no obedience to his word, if there is no obedience to whatever he tells you, because he knows the end of that storm. And so he knows the end of that storm, even from the beginning, even while that storm is there. So he knows what you should do. All you need to do is obey him. Like what happened in the wedding of Cana. The, uh, Mary, Jesus' mother, told those servants that whatever he tells you, do it. Because she knows that he knows what can, how they can come out of that storm. The storm of not having wine at that wedding. You know, maybe there's even a, an important dignity that they're supposed to give that wine to. And alas, wine is finished. So if she said, she had told them, informed them ahead that whatever he tells you, do it because it might not make sense. And at the end of the day, he said they should pour water in a jar. They could have been saying, what's this man saying? Well, say, they can even be panicky. And he, not only did he say that, he said they should go and give it to the chairman. They wine, the water, the, the, you know, they poured water in a jar and he said, go and pour it to him. And they obeyed him, you know, despite the fact that they might sound silly. They collaborated with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened? Their storm was still. Even the chairman said, he told the, the, you know, the people doing the wedding that they had actually saved the best for the last. So not only was now wine enough, but you know, it became very it became a the best that they could ever get. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another example that we have been told by that in the Lord is that widow, that prophet's widow, that woman that her children, they were, you know, the people that her husband were owing, were just coming for her children. And she told the prophet, and the prophet said, what do you have? And she hearkened, she obeyed totally what the prophet said. Like we understood, we know the story. And her obedience led, led her to surplus. Not only did she have enough, you know, to sell and pay off the debt, she also had enough for herself and her children. Because the prophet, when she went to the prophet, that this is what he said, Yes, that's okay, you can sell, and the remaining one is for you and your children and uh, like our daddy the lord has also spoken to us about the program he went to how god told him in that sandstorm that he should stretch forth his hand and he should speak to that storm and say peace and what happened exactly as he has said just like the bible reading that even the children of his, the disciples were afraid and they said what manner of man is this that even the storm obey him so the storm will obey the lord and what you need to do is pitch your tent near him be in collaboration with him and like our daddy has also said that we should not be afraid he told the children his disciples that why are you afraid what happens when fear comes is that it erodes your it erodes every of your senses it erodes all that you need to do and it becomes difficult for you to go to god in fact, when you go to God, you might be going in the wrong way. And at the end of the prayer, eventually God is speaking to you. You will not be able to hear. So there's one thing that has, you know, that is common to all the story we have heard, is that they heard Jesus gave instruction. 
the Lord gave instruction. And what happened? They obeyed. What happened when the prophet, through the inspiration of God, gave instruction and she obeyed. So what is important is no matter that storm you are going through, you need to go to God in prayer. Go to him in prayer and ask him to help you. Stay there like that thing the Lord has said until he tells you what to do. Until t- and whatever it is that he has told you, do it and see as that storm over your life will be still. It reminded me of a time, you know, sometime last year or last two years, I was going through a storm. It was a storm, a big one. I tried my best to use my head, my brain on what, how do I come out of this? What do I need to do? I've tried this. In short, the more I tried this method, it became worse, you know, and I thought I was praying to God, but I was praying and in fear and thinking that, and I was doing things on my own. Until I remember that our God is a very present help in times of trouble. There are so many friends. It's only when things are rosy that you see them. But this particular friend, who is God, who is the storm stealer, is telling you that he specializes in stealing storms. He specializes in the time of trouble. He said, the very present help in times of trouble. I went to him and said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I have tried all I could. And he gave me a word. Give me a direction. And that was it. And I went through that direction and the storm was completely over. I pray for you under the sound of my voice that it, no matter that storm that you are going through, that the Lord will speak to you and the storm over your life will be still in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the Lord will give you boldness like that of a lion you know, to face that storm to obey the word of God, to act according to what the Lord has spoken concerning you. And as you act according to the word of God, I pray that every storm will obey you because he has given you power. He said, where the word of the of kings is, there is liberty. Every storm over your life, over my life, they are still right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So in summary, you should learn to collaborate with God in the times of storm. Don't allow that storm to take over your life. But allow the word of God, allow your relationship with God to take over and listen to God. Pray, go to God in prayer and he will answer you. And go to him in faith. And as you confront that storm in faith, of uh, the, uh, the storm will obey you and keep quiet in Jesus' name. Amen. The prayer point, Father, please tell me what to do to steal the storm. Mention that storm. To steal the storm in my life and family in Jesus' name. That storm will be still in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.